uh, of what happened to it. And then I remembered Claudine brought me a part that she had found, and she said, what is this? <laughs> and it was a rod about this long that had a spring on it, and it had a hook on one side. And I said, well, honey, that's what they used to lift the, the <coughs> lid off a Dutch oven so you don't get burned. And she, says, and, and she says, well, we don't need that. So I went and threw it in the garbage. <laughs> and, and, and when I found out that that was the part he was looking for, I says, Hmm. And I said it really good because Chris has been teaching us to say, hmm. And, and, and I said, yeah, I know where the part's at. I threw it in the trash, but I don't know if the garbage man has come and picked it up or not. So I went out there, dug in it, found the, the part, and he said, usually when that breaks, it breaks a little plastic bracket. But he says, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. He put it together. He said his bill would be five dollars. I gave him more than that. Put it together, and we'll wash and close. And I thought the Lord says I'm going to bless that old stubborn son of mine, hard-headed one. Whether I have to send somebody uninvited, if I have to send somebody that he doesn't have confidence, I'm going to bless. Him. And so we got the machine put in, and we don't have to get a new. One. I mean, God just takes care of us. Amen. I, I was happy as when we used to have them old foot washings. How many of you do oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, Some of you do. I thought if we'd have one these days for a place to vacate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been like revival around here, and tonight's going to be the same. Let's stand and let's ask the Lord to bless us again tonight. Our Heavenly Father, first of all, we've got to thank you. We've got to praise you because, oh, you've been so faithful. Night after night, every night we have Every single night I felt your presence and I knew you was in the house. And I believe you're going to be here again tonight and we invite you, we invite the Holy Spirit to come and to walk the aisles and to talk to us and to deal with us and to bless us. Oh Master, may heaven come down and may you be aware that the King of Kings is in the house. And we're going to thank you for everything that is accomplished in your wonderful name. Amen. I get to live with Jesus
here today. I have a song that
Nashville. My granddaughter's there right now, and her husband, they work in, he plays the piano and keyboard in one of those churches, but I don't know what it is. It's not Assembly of God, I don't think. But anyway, they're down there now. They decided to go to Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm just praying they'll come home. They need to be home. Anyway. She comes pretty often. She'll be here next week because her mama's having her 60th birthday. Uh, maybe Carla won't watch this and she won't know I won't tell, that I told that. But anyway, uh, you've just been gracious and kind and good and giving. So tonight, just do just more. Just, just pour it on him. Well, we're going to receive our giving, so if our ushers would come at this time. Are you ready, Brother Dick? Yeah. And Brother Lee, come on down. Hallelujah. Y'all sure quiet tonight. Now, we've changed things up for this revival, as you have noticed. We don't uh, have the worship time. We have it at the end of the service, which I see us worshiping more there than we do when we're actually having that time of worship. We want to keep things going. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. Brother Dick, would you give thanks? Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for our blessing. Hallelujah. Help us to give and be good tonight. We ask it. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
didn't we? When I was young, it didn't matter. It matters, so maybe a little skinny or two. I could have better breath. It's good to have Randy with us tonight. This is Sister uh, Ruthie's son. God bless you. And I saw him worshiping God on that song. You know, that's a toe-tapping, hallelujah meeting song. That's one we ought to get happy on. Because it's going to be a hallelujah meeting. The angels are going to have to shut up while we sing the song of redemption because they don't know anything about it. Hallelujah. We are the redeemed. We are the blood-washed throng that's going to sing the song of Zion together. Can you even imagine what heaven's going to be like? I think there is going to be a lot of singing. There's going to be a lot of music when we get to heaven. And nobody's going to have to worry about their hearing aids getting too loud. Nobody's going to have to worry about all of that. We can just blast it, honey. Hallelujah. Praise God. Make a joyful noise, the Bible says, unto the Lord. Praise God. I'm glad that he didn't say, is everything got to be just right or do you just leave it alone? And you Listen, if we had to do that, we'd be lost a long time ago. <laughs> Here, you know, we, I make more mistakes than anybody, but I feel like I'm among friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> this is my family. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, Chris, are you ready? Yeah. Come on down. Let's give him a great big hand. Well, praise the Lord. This is Friday night. Brother Manning, it's so good to see you. Well, they walked in, I, I said, it, it, he's a sight from sore eyes. And uh, praise the Lord. Stand and testify. What, what are y'all doing over there in Tennessee? Well, we've uh, pretty much
Praise the Lord. We, we, need, all, we need all the soldiers today. How many of you know, folks, we need all to get in, in, involved in this because Jesus is coming again. You're available, praise the Lord. To the, to the, to the, I remember Gene Jackson he used to be the superintendent of that district. I don't know who it is now, but uh, that was a long time ago. Many years ago. How many of you know that time does not stand still? Yeah. Brother Dick, are you feeling okay? Yeah. All right. Bless your heart. Amen. Well, are you glad you're here tonight? Yeah. Take your Bibles, if you would, to the book of First or Second Kings chapter 4. This evening, 2 Kings chapter 4. How many of you appreciate uh, Brother Sister Kinsey? Amen? Uh, to do this when uh, they're, not, they're no longer 30 anymore, they're 38. And uh, they're, they're not doing this uh, just to, to mark time, but they really want to see revival. And uh, God has put you all together, folks. Don't, don't, don't ever misunderstand that. There's, you're here by divine appointment. Even with Brother Dick falling over there. Uh, God has a, God, God can touch your body totally tonight. Do what? You had to kiss the car, but well, you lay before the Lord. Amen. And uh, But the Lord can raise totally that up. Do you have any pain in your mouth from this? You bit your lip, I guess. I've done that before. And uh, but you're not here by accident. How many of you tonight believe that we're here are people of destiny tonight? Amen. Prayer is a, it's very important. We prayed before the service it was awesome here, and uh, I'm not such they need to ask God's blessing upon this message. If you don't mind, would you stand and ask God's blessing? Father, we praise you and thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the, the many times that you blessed us and we failed to thank you. Yes. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless each of us tonight. Pray that a special anointing once again on Brother Chris, Lord, as in, in our hearts, so we might receive what you've given of him to give to us. Yes, Lord. I pray, Lord, again for Brother Dave, Lord, that you'll touch him. Yes, yes Lord. Continue yes. to touch him, Lord Jesus. And once again, we thank you for your word that we're going to be yes. receiving tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let me give you a little bit of background before I even read the text here. And that is, in 2 Kings, uh, this is the dealing with the northern kingdom, where there was great hostility against the prophets of God. Ahab had just died. Jezebel, his wife, she's still living. Uh, Ahab, I think his grandson now, is reigning as king. And the, the, uh, there had not been a great revival in, northern, in the northern part of the, of the nation of Israel. It, it was bleak. But how many of you believe that no matter how bleak it gets, God still moves? Amen. Never look at the circumstances around us to determine what God can do for you. So that we Never allow the, the, the circumstances. America is in trouble. America is in moral decline. America is headed for some hard times because of, of the sin of it. But in spite of all of that, I have a God that answers prayer. Do you believe that today? And the scriptures, and we've heard this preached many times, I'm sure Sister Kimsey's preached it many times, Brother Manning, Sister Nadine, and Brother Valentine, definitely I'm sure he's preached it. But it says, now there will cry a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the pro. 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 4. Did I not say that? Yes. I'm sorry. I did not. I just, sometimes I don't. So. Okay, here we go. Now there cried a woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets of Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. That is the nature of the enemy, is to enslave your kids. Did y'all see that? 
I'll come back to that in a minute. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the, ve the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour unto, the, unto all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. And she, kept, she, and she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live, and live, and live thou, and thy children of the rest. Everybody say live. live. How many tonight desire to live? Yeah. 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 Elijah, a few chapters before this, has been taken to heaven with a chariot of fire. Now Elijah has taken his place. He has received the call of God. He wanted this. He, he wanted a double portion of God's spirit. How many did it desire for a double portion of the Spirit of God upon your life. But as I said this past week, it's not for my enjoyment. It's for my employment. A lot of people come up though, they'll say, pray that God will use me, and they never win a soul. They never talk to anybody. I don't even know why they, they what they're really wanting is an experience, which is fine, and I love the experience, but God wants to give you more than an experience. He wants to give you an anointing and a mandate and a call in order to meet the needs of people around us. Amen. So Elijah was called in by this woman who was, became a widow. And her husband was a, a prophet. He was a minister or a man of God. And he dies. How many know that people do die? And when he died, it left her poor. And I believe there's several reasons why she's poor. And one reason is because there's this hostility against the ministry in the northern part of Israel. By this time, Israel has divided into two nations, the northern and the southern. The northern did not have a temple of Solomon. The southern did. Where this woman is residing, there is no temple. They would have to go to the southern part of the kingdom in order to sacrifice unto God. And so her husband dies, and she, she's, she's very, very poor. And her husband left her indebted. Has, have you ever met anybody that leaves other, you have to pay other people's debts? Some of you are nodding, some of you are not. Well, this woman was left with the debt. And according to the, to the, to the law of Moses, if you could not pay the debt, the one that you owe the debt to you come in and take your kids as indentured servants and work until the debt is paid. Back in those days, there were no credit cards. There was no bankruptcy. You, you had to pay your debt. And there's a lot into that. How many of you know that we are to pay our debts? In fact, nowadays, when you want to get your credentials with your symbols of God, they do a background check to see if you are indebted. Do you pay your bills? I think one of the greatest indictments against ministry sometimes has been when people do not pay their bills. But this woman could not pay her bills. So she cries out. How many of you believe that when you cry out, God will hear your cry? How many of you know that God has a way to get you out of your dilemma. Yes. I'll say that again. How many of you believe that God 
will give you the way to get out of your dilemma if you want out. I think that's that they'll preach from it. She cries out to Elijah. And she tells him the story that the creditor is going to take my sons and make them bondmen. What do I do? How, how can I get out of this? How do I get out of the situation that I did not even ask for? And sometimes we will be in situations in life that we did not even ask for. Sometimes a husband will leave a, a, a spouse, and it's not that you asked for that. Sometimes your, a son or daughter may die, and you did not ask for that. But what do you do when those things come against you? Maybe when you're you're, you're sick, you did not ask, ask for that. What what do you do? How many of you believe that God will give you the way out? I learned a long time ago that the main the main way that God delivers people is through. I believe that God delivers of drugs immediately, alcohol immediately, vices immediately, sin immediately. But trials, it's usually you go through it. Yeah. You go through the Red Sea. You go through the, the fiery furnace. You go through the lion's den. You go through the prison, but you're only going through. You don't stay there. How many times I want to get through your trial? You can do shout praise the Lord. Elijah says to her, what do you want me to do for you? He's probably just as poor as she is. He's hated just like her husband was. Well, we're living in a day, brother, when the church is the most unpopular place to be in America. A especially the true church. Well, one man I really admire in Dallas, and that's Brother Jeffers. He pastors First Baptist in Dallas, Texas. And he's on Fox News several times. And he's taken a major stand against sin in America. And he had a billboard last year advertising their church about how that Jesus is the answer, something like that. Very, 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 just very generic, but it's just very good. And the mayor of the city of Dallas called the sign company and told the sign company for them to take that sign down because it was offending the non-Christians. And the sign company took it down, but thank God another sign company called, called Dr. Jeffers at first and said, you can use our sign. Yeah. How, how many of you know, folks, you cannot just go away because someone doesn't like you? Right. Well, I feel that in my spirit. You, Elijah did not go away, go away just because Jezebel did not like him. You, you, you cannot stop having church because an ungodly person over on the other side of town does not like you. You cannot stop praising God because the devil doesn't like it. You cannot stop giving because the devil says don't give. You cannot allow the enemy to determine what you and I do. We're going to call on the name of the Lord in spite of everything the devil has. How do you believe that God is still a rewarder of them that call upon him? And so Elijah said, what do you want me to do? And then he says to her, what is in your house? What do you have? Now everybody here has something. Some churches the way they raise money is they'll give a dollar to every person in the church and they'll say, we'll give you so many weeks or months to multiply this. See, it's interesting, folks. One thing I really believe that God dis 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 disdains is laziness. What is in your house? She says, I have a, a, a little bit of oil. That's all I have. And he comes back. He, this is the paraphrase. This, he doesn't say this, but this is actually what is implied here. That's enough. Little as much when God is in. Little as much. Let me say, little as much. Instead of getting little as much with God is in. Instead of saying what you don't have, look at what you do have. Instead of saying, I don't have this, I don't have a towel, I don't have this, I, I can't do this, I can't, I'm not this. We all have our deaths, uh, detriments, we all have our handicaps, and so did this lady, but she had some oil. What, what do you have? What, 
what can God use in your life? How many believe that God can? God is a God of multiplication. Amen. Let me say that again. God is a God of multiplication. Now He does prove. He'll prove back that which is not fruitful. That's a sermon in that, folks. See, the pruning part, will, God will come in and take the parts of our life that are not fruitful so that it will multiply more. I, I, they have a lot of orange groves out here. They have to prune those trees. They have to take the dead branches off. And sometimes if they don't produce any fruit, they, they, they pour it up. Remember when Jesus cursed the fig tree? Because he's looking for fruit. So there is a place where God will prune. But in reality, the reason why he prunes is to multiply. He, he wants growth. He, he wants this, even though this is not a church per se, he still wants it to grow. Do you believe it? He wants every Holy Ghost church. I always said the old term says the holiness church. He wants every holiness church, every Holy Ghost church to grow. He wants every Bible-believing Christian to grow. How many tonight desire to grow if you do say praise the Lord? Now God is getting ready to get ready. So thank you for coming out. God is getting ready to give this woman a miracle, and she is going to be a part of it. She is going to be a facilitator of the miracle, and so are her sons. Because this is going to become a test of their faith in believing what the man of God has said. The problem is never, listen, the problem of the, of, is never the preaching of the word. It's applying the word. Doing the word. Brother Robert Morris here in Dallas, Texas, I've been reading a book called The Blessed Life. You have that book? Tremendous book on giving. And he deals with how we, we he blesses us to bless. Amen. And I like that. But some people never learn that because they're always afraid of giving. And therefore they stop growing. And I'm not just talking about finances. I'm talking about our life. They, 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 and I, there's something that I don't totally understand this completely. But the, the, I noticed something. The folks that don't give are usually the biggest complainers in the church. Y'all with me, saints? Usually the people that don't tithe are the biggest complainers. They're the biggest problematic people in church. Because they're stuck. They're never in a blessing. How many desire to be blessed? So, so Elijah says, what I want you to do is go to all of your neighbors and I want you to, to borrow all kinds of vessels. Vessels that are bigger than the one you have. Yeah. Oh, can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. uh oh, A. a. Allen preached a message a long time ago before I was born. born. It says, uh, think big. Yeah. Don't look at your lack to determine what God can do. God can take my lack and multiply that, that he will be glorified. Can anybody say praise the Lord tonight? Praise praise the Lord. The Lord. Hallelujah. So she, she, all she had was a cruise of oil. She, she just had a little bit of oil. Probably, probably it was not for cooking. If this oil, I was reading on it today, was probably in a little flask for anointing. But she believed the man of God. That's it. Do you believe the word of God? Amen. Do you really believe if you'll cry unto him, I'll answer you. Amen. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Do we really believe that? I I've had to live that. I've had to try that. Your faith, listen to me now. God will never tempt you to sin. 
But your faith will be tested. That's where your test is. The, the, the obvious sins of, you know, I, I, I don't plan on ever going out here to get drunk. I've never even tried a cigarette. I never smoked weed. I don't know what cocaine, they say cocaine looks like Splenda. <laughs> or Sweet Low, whatever that is. But it's the faith issue. Stepping out in faith. Stepping out when there is nothing but a cruise of oil. Anybody in the house tonight? This woman, she, she doesn't have a husband. She doesn't, I don't know if she has a dad. I don't know if she has a brother or an uncle. I don't, but we do know she has two sons. And God is going to use Elijah to increase their faith so that they can become blessed. He said, go burn all these vessels. So she, she took, sends her boys out. Go ask Miss Smith over here if she's got any pictures over there that, or, uh, that she can have. Lynn. So they go from house to house. Mama needs some, mama needs some vessels for, for what she needed for. I don't know. So a, a man came by. Say, go borrow them. All right. The whole house is filled up. And then she closes the door. See, there's certain things that God has to teach you. And it's not for anybody else but you. Before this ministry was, I'll just go back to Sister Kimson. You see, she's your pastor. Before she ever went to El Mirage, or started Lighthouse, or went on the evangelistic field, or started this work here, or went to, went to uh, I was at Albuquerque, to Wilcox. It starts somewhere behind a closed door. You follow that? Where you begin to seek the face of God. Every ministry starts somewhere alone. The reason why a lot of us never hear from God is because we're never alone with God. And I, and I love prayer meetings with people. But really, God doesn't speak to me so much with the people. We're interceding. It's when I get by myself. And God has my full attention. Can anybody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. When God has my full attention. It's not that I have his attention. He has my attention. And when God begins to get your attention, and you, you shut yourself in. Or you go out in the woods, brother man. And you seek the face of God. That's where the ministry, that's where the call becomes, is birthed. Yeah. That's where the miracle starts. We see the fruit of it. That's why I'm not real big on criticizing other preachers in the pulpit because I don't know where they were 30 years ago. Right. Mm. Got to say praise the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's why if God blesses you and all of a sudden you become greatly used of God and I believe there's people in here that are being used of God and can be greater used of God is not for me to criticize that individual because I do not know where they were when they closed the door. So he says to close the door. So this lady, she gets, she gets all her sons in there. She closes the door. Now what's interesting, Elijah, Elisha does not get the vessels for her. He's not going to do the work for her. People come up to me all the time. Brother Chris, would you please pray for my kids? And we do. But they have to pray for their own kids. It's not me. I'm not a Catholic priest. We're not Catholics. In Catholicism, it's the priest 
that has a connection to God. But we believe that we're all kings and priests. We all can call upon the name of the Lord. I, 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 you know, I guess my, my nature is to try to, to save people. And I'm not just talking about saving them spiritually. I mean, trying, you know, trying to always do it for them. And I learned a long time ago, I cannot do your praying for you. I cannot do your praising for you. I cannot do your church attendance for you. I cannot do your singing for you. You have to do it. You have to put something into this. You cannot do it for me. I cannot just, I, I know years ago, some, some of the younger guys, when they started in ministry, they, if they got, had an opportunity to go play, play golf or, or baseball, they called the pastor and said, you know, I can't make it tonight. Can you get somebody else to, to take my place? It just wasn't in them. But when you have a passion for the things of God, it doesn't matter what comes your way. You're saying, I'm going to fulfill the mandate of God upon my life. Can anybody say praise the Lord? I understand that's not easy to be an Elijah. It's not easy to be a widow woman. It's not easy to be a son of a widow woman where you're going to have to probably go and work until the debt is paid. It, it, it probably is not going to be easy. But who says it's supposed to be easy? How many of you know that life is not easy? Prayer is not easy. Preaching is not easy. Singing is not easy. Doing a song service is not easy. Coming to church is not always going to be easy. Paying your tithes is not always going to be easy. God, I, in, fact, in a way, I really believe that God allows struggle in order to develop us. How many tonight believe that God is developing you if you do say praise the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he, he says, uh, shut the door. So she shut, shuts the door. And, and it's, it, it's, I think the shut in, she shuts herself in because I don't know exactly how this happens. You know, we can only speculate. She probably finds a little jar a little bit bigger than the one she was using for the oil. And she begins to pour it. As she's pouring it, it fills up. And there's still oil in the small one. And then she goes to another one. And I would imagine, Brother Valentine, this had to take a long time. It, it probably took maybe a few hours. And the sons are watching this. You follow this? Her kids are watching this. Sister Kimsey quoted that scripture back there about the next generation. And I mentioned the other night, and I want you to hear my heart, please. This is not it, this is not against anybody here. This is not any, that's not my intent. But the reason why you're young, I'm going to say 40 years, I'll say 45 years older, old and younger. The reason why they're not interested in this is because they never saw anything. There was a shift, and I was I've been preaching. Since I was 17, there was a shift. Are you okay? Okay. There, there, there was a shift in the Pentecostal movement away. Oh, is, is it cold? Is it, okay. There was a shift away from the movement of the Holy Ghost. So we raised a generation in our movement that never saw it. And they're not seeing it now. You follow this? These boys are seeing something. And not only are they seeing it, they're helping facilitate it. They're participating in this. 
But there's so much in this text. God wants to use everybody in this room. God, God wants to use every. If you will seek God, that God would use you in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, He would use you. I'll say that again. If you would say, I want God to use me in the gifts of the Holy Ghost, He would start using you. It doesn't just be two or three people in a church giving a message in tongues or an interpretation of tongues or a word of prophecy or the word of wisdom. God wants to use everybody in this room. If you want that. If you desire for God to use you. How many of you desire for God to use your life? I believe in this room are, are, are men and women that God can use to teach and to preach. You say, well, I'm not young anymore. But God, can, God called Smith Wigglesworth when he was 45 years old. The age has not, yeah, it has a, it's a factor, but it's not the defining factor. But you have to shut yourself in with God and say, Lord, I lay my life before you. My, my nation is falling apart. Uh, the devil is raging. Our kids don't know if they're men or women. We're, we're living in a day. Can you use me? Is there, is there anything that I can see happen, can do, in order to, to, to see some type of a revival in America? In Phoenix, Arizona, in Sun City, in Youngtown. Yeah. In Mesa, in, Temp in Tempe, is there anything God, that I can do that you can do for me? Because they're taking my kids away. Yeah. You have kids and grandkids that are not going to make it to heaven. Right. And you know it. Yeah. See, we're always easier on our own kids than others. We're, 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 we're more apt to, to, to overlook the sins of our own family than the sins of other families. But see, God doesn't overlook sin like we do. There's two ways of looking at sin. My perspective and God's perspective. And so when we begin to look at God's perspective, we say, Lord, is there anything that I can do? And God will begin to speak to you. What's in your house? God told Moses, what's in thy hand? Yeah. A staff. <laughs> Throw it on the ground. He throws it on the ground. He becomes a serpent. God says, take the serpent by the tail. He takes it by the tail. He becomes a rod again. And from that moment on, it was no longer Moses' rod. It's now the rod of the Lord. Can I get a witness out here today? It's no longer, it's no longer just a staff out here. And you can preach all kinds of stuff on the staff. Because the staff in the Old Testament, the shepherd would write his history on the staff. Hmm. His diary. Hallelujah. And when you find Jacob, he leaned on the staff. He's leaning on his history. He's leaning on his past. There's something when you begin to get involved in the work of God. You yourself become, get, this woman is involved in the work of God. She's not waiting for Elijah to do something. She's not waiting uh, for him to say something. He says, what is in my house? I have some oil. That's enough. Go get some vessels and begin to fill them up. Remember when, when Naaman came to the man of Elijah also. And, and Naaman expected Elijah to go out there and do something over him. You know, hoodoo him. Put his hand over him. And Elijah said, tell him to go dip seven times in the Jordan River. You do that. There's something about when we say, lift your hands and praise God. You do that. Let's come to the altar and see the face of God. We do that. When, 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 it, when it's time to say, let's glorify the name of the Lord. We do that. It's not just us doing it. I, I don't know where this happened. But did, when you and I begin to participate in the work of God, that's when God begins to move through your life. And you begin to see the glory of God. Does anybody in this house see the glory that God is magnified when you and I begin to obey his word? He can do something. When I started preaching, when I was 17, 18, 19 years old, and I was in Bible school, I wanted to go, they, they told us at Southwestern, 
Go where nobody will go. So I went where nobody would go. I went to mission churches, storefront churches, where they took a microphone and put it down the piano, and half the keys didn't work, and, and, the, and the ivories were, were torn off the keys, and, and they had uh, a couple songbooks and a, a, a couple tambourines and a bunch of screaming kids and gum under the, under the pews. Anybody ever been there before? Yeah, I've been there, folks. And you're preaching there. And you're excited to be there. And actually, they're excited for you to be there. This is young preacher boy coming in. He doesn't know a whole lot. Hallelujah. But he's trying. Because he wants to be a part of the work of God. Not telling the preacher what he's supposed to do. And telling them what they're supposed to be doing. You just start doing it. Mm. Can I get a witness out here? Man. When you and I begin to do the work of God, how desperate are you for your family? How desperate are you for your children? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You have to start telling the devil, devil, you're not having my kids. Say, so you have to start saying, devil, you're not having my kids. You tell... You talk to your mountain. Yes. You speak yes. to your mountain. Hallelujah. You tell your mountain Hallelujah. is moving. Yes. Yes. It's like Tombstone, Arizona. The town too tough to die. I preached several revivals through the years of that little church of Bethel, whatever the name of that is, Bethel. And 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 they and you did that. They got when God called in, wind up all those men. That this town ain't big enough for all of us, and so is leaving, and it's not going to be me. And you have to tell the devil that. Devil, this town, this house is not big enough for you and me. And someone is leaving and it's not going to be me. You're going to leave in Jesus' name. You become a facilitator of the work of God. I, I thank God that I can call other people to help pray with me. And I'm for all that. I'm, I get all that. I, but th that does not negate my place of beginning to say, God, here I am. How many of you believe that God wants to use you if you do lift up your hand and shout praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. All right, let me say that again. How many of you want God to use you if you do shout praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Brother Clint plays the organ over here. It's not, it's not making any sound right now. Nothing is coming out of this organ because he's not playing the organ. An organ cannot play itself. A piano cannot play itself. Drums cannot play itself. The guitar cannot play itself. The bass cannot play itself. This microphone cannot cannot make any noise without somebody speaking into it. Someone has got to sit down there and play that piano. Someone has got to play that guitar. Someone has got to play those drums. It's just because you have pretty drums in the church or a beautiful piano. No one can play it. What good is it? It's like having a, a beautiful car out there in your garage. So maybe it's a Bentley, but you don't know even know how to crank it. I mean, what good is it to you? But when you learn how to begin to drive something, that's when you begin to
And the Holy Ghost began to move. Because we were a part of the move. Do you get that? Yeah. I just want to go to church where the Holy Ghost moves. Well, so do I. Move! <laughs> Sit there like a bump on a log. Won't say anything. Won't lift your hands. Won't praise God out loud. Listen to me, folks. This is not a, an entertainment place. This is to get the door closed and get the, the vessels full of oil to get the work of God done. Can anybody shout amen tonight? Yes. You've got to do something. Yes. And, and so she closes the door and she begins to fill everything up. And she says, boys, look at this, look at this. And, and mama, can I try it? Mama, can I try it? Mama, can I try it? Mama, hey, honey, you, you try it. And he just said, Mama, look at, look at, just what you did, I'm doing too. Yes. And the other brother, brother said, because there's always competition with my kids, I want to try it too. You give me that. And so he starts doing it. And the other one says, give it back to me. I want to try it. Because when God begins to move, it becomes exciting. It becomes contagious. I don't believe that God wants dead churches. I don't believe that God wants dead saints. He wants people on fire that are part of the move of the Holy Ghost. Even want. Do you demonstrate anything that your kids want? This is what is so powerful about this sermon. About this, this text. Uh, pray, pray for my kids. They get saved. Me like you? But I'm just not emotional. Put your hand in a light socket sometime and find out how unemotional you are. How yes. can I get a witness? Yes. Pray. I don't know why my kids don't want to go to church. I don't know why people. I, I, I preach for pastors. This, this one blows me away. I preach for pastors. They don't even want to go to the church they pass it. It's so dead. And they're the preacher. Mm. And mother says, you give me that old back. Let me do some porn. And they begin to fill up all the vessels. The oil was not poured into the street to be wasted. It has to be in some. See, God does not waste his anointing. When the vessel stops, the oil stops. When I stop, it will stop. When I open up, he opens up. When I close up, he closes up. He's not going to pour his oil upon a, a, a vessel that is closed. That is not open. We're not umbrella. He doesn't pour his spirit upon umbra. He pours it upon people that are desperate. Mm. 
the great evangelist Maria Webber Eder. How many of you have he ever heard of her before? Maria Webber Eder. She, they called her. Have you ever heard of her before? Maria Webber Eder was a holiness preacher in the 1800s, late 1800s. She was a short lady. And she began to preach holiness camp meetings. But when the outpouring of the Holy Ghost came in California, she received the Holy Ghost. And Maria Wentworth Anner would be preaching in her tent after she got the Holy Ghost. And she could put her finger up like this preaching. And she would go into a trance for two or three days and stop there. And people would come out just to watch her. She, she froze like this. She would preach and the Holy Ghost would fall 50 miles away from her services. It would fall upon people plowing in a field and they would fall between the plow under convicting, conviction of the whole. Well, they didn't even hear her preach. She shook. She shook America. Her people, when they would go in and be slain in the spirit back then, they'd be out for days. J.T. Davis heard her as a boy in Dallas, Texas, when she came to Fair Park. And he said a cloud appeared over her platform while she's preaching. She was a facilitator of the move of God. She became a conduit, a vessel, a channel for the move of the Holy Ghost. Pearl Ellis, remember Pearl Ellis? She was a librarian in Southwest. Her sister Ellis just died a couple years ago. She was 101 years old. She went to Southwestern back in the 1920s and 30s when P.C. Nelson was the president. And she and Sister Andrew came to Southwestern back in that era and preached for them. God is looking for someone that he can work through. Amen. That he can flow through. That you can say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Here. I'm desperate for you. My generation, my generation needs a move of God. I'm almost done with this message. She fills up all the vessels and she says, give me another vessel. And there is none, none other. And then Elijah comes back on the scene. He says, sell what you have. And after you've sold it and paid your debt, then live. Every say live. Live. Yeah. Live off the rest of it. But I just want to deal with the part of living. The, the church that is full of the Holy Ghost, the oil, is a living church. Yes. It doesn't matter if you get tired. We're not talking about when people get tired. I'm not saying that because you, you have a bad day, you're not living. Or because uh, you, Brother Dick back there, he fell. Doesn't mean he's not living. Things do happen to us. We do, we do get tired. So the kids, he was up till 3 o'clock in the morning the other day. Did all my shirts. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that we get tired. This body gets tired. But that does not mean you're not living in the Holy Ghost. Uh, sometimes we don't feel like shouting. Sometimes we feel like weeping. Sometimes we're just wrung out. But that doesn't mean that the, the, the spirit of the Lord is not in there. In fact, in reality, the more God begins to use you, he'll pour more back into you. I, I, the, the, in revivals, I, I've, got, I've been so tired, I'll, tra I'll travel hundreds of miles to get to a meeting. And I'm sitting there on a Sunday morning, getting ready to, to, to preach. And I'm just dog tired, as we say, I'm just dog tired. And I get up on that platform, and something kicks in. It's called the oil of the Holy Ghost. It's called the anointing of God. And all of a sudden, every cell of my body is rejuvenated. I, I, we can come into a service, and it's just kind of dry. And all of a sudden, you begin to, get, you begin to sing a song. And and all of a sudden that Holy Ghost begins to kick in and you're open to God. Is anybody here open to God? They're going to pour into you if you are shouting in today. All he's looking for is a vessel. Uh, he, he's not, you don't have to be a golden vessel. You don't have to be a silver vessel. All you have to be is a yielded vessel. Can, can I get a witness? That's all he's looking for is someone that is yielded to him. Anybody here yielded to God? If you are shouting in. Listen, listen, I want you to hear my, my heart. Thank God for big churches. I'm from a big church. I was 
Brother Jones was like pastor of the assembly, preached many revivals, 1,300 people in Sunday school. Praise God for those churches. But maybe God doesn't want you in a big church. Maybe God needs in a small church to be used of Him. Yeah. Oh, can I get a witness out here? Yeah. Yeah. Where it's not all done for you. Where the staff is not paid because there's no way to pay a staff here. You're doing good to give me an offering. But maybe God wants you in this place. I've never said this before here. I want you to hear me. Maybe God wants you here. Where it's not all done, where you don't have all the lights of the show and all that, that, that's, that, that has that, that has a place for some people. But when God is looking for a, a vessel, this says, I want to be used somewhere. And I'll just be very honest with you. If a church with three or four or five thousand people, they're probably, you're probably not going to have the opportunity to be used as you would in a smaller congregation. Hello. Amen. Amen. I, 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 you know, you'll say, well, you know, well, Brother Chris, have you ever, because I, you know, since I'm originally from out here in Arizona, they'll say, have you ever preached at, at uh, Tommy Bryant's church? I said, no, I never have. I said, but there are other churches in Arizona besides Tommy Bryant's church. Yeah. And that's not an indictment against Tommy Bryant. I know when, when that church was not a, was not a big church. Are you with me, saints? All right, listen, listen to me. Come again. Listen to what I have to say here tonight. Listen to me. Don't get in the, the, the trap of having to have it all done for you. Yeah. Say, God, here I am. Yeah. Use me. Yeah. Flow through me. Yeah. There's over 250 churches in this district. All in the Dallas in, in Texas, we have an almost, we're approaching 650 of someone's got churches in the North Texas district. And we do have some big churches. We have Oak Cliff Assembly, that's called the Oaks now. We have Trinity Assembly, we have other churches. But we have hundreds of other churches that do not, yes. do not have 10,000 people in there. Yes. But where does God want us? Right. Can I get a witness out here tonight? Yes. I'm so thankful, Brother Manny, our new superintendent of our district. He said he was no longer in the numbers game. He said, I got out of the numbers game years ago, gave the college. He said, I got out of the numbers game. I you know what that does. It makes people like us that are not preaching to 15,000 people every Sunday say, hey, you know what? We, we, we have some value too. Yeah. But does anybody in this room desire for God to use you? If you do, shout amen tonight. Yeah. So when do you want that to happen? Yeah. Then get with it. Live. And yes, this church can grow. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. And maybe it doesn't, God doesn't want to be a mega church. Maybe God will say, I want another church to come out of it. I was at a church in, in Peru, Lima, Peru, years ago. That church started as, in 50 years, Brother Valentine, started 50 churches in 50 years. They start a church a year. And that church, that they start, starts a church a year. Brother Ray Chavez in Denver, Mr. McKenzie's preached for him. He started so many churches out of his church that he's never lacks in his. Ray's church, you know him. It's never empty. And they said a hundred people with this other preacher. A hundred people over there. But the oil never stops. So, you know, God, I don't know where God wants you. But God knows where he needs you. That's how we used to pray. Lord, where do you need me?
Well, let's start out here. going to find a better person to learn from that knows how to flow with the Holy Ghost. So that you can learn that for the next group. Praise the Lord. And you know, let me tell you something. You'll get frustrated say, is this really worth it? Yeah. And then after you say all that, close the door. You know how many times, folks, I've wanted to leave them, not, not God, leave the ministry. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's been a few times I want to go to the district office. Take my car, my car that cost me three hundred dollars, and say you deal with it. <laughs> but after you close the door, yeah. and you get before the Lord, yeah. and after you're done complaining and telling why God can't use you. Why, why, he, he, he'll tell, God, this is really like, I'm going to tell you, God, why you can't use me. Number one. Number two. <laughs> number three. Number four. You know what I'm talking about? And, and the Lord says, I know that already. I know that. You're not telling me anything I don't know. I'm not, I'm just asking you, will you give me your life? Yes. So to Kinsey, she has uh, a couple things she has to overcome. One is she's a woman preacher. Uh, not every assembly God minister, Senator Aiden, you know this, agrees with women preachers. Yeah. I have to tell me that. Yeah. In all from Oklahoma, I'm just joking. <laughs> and then they'll tell, they'll tell me, I have a, a good friend of mine. He just, he, 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 he is just so, uh, I said, man, brother, you need to just get a grip on life. You just move on. He's, he's so anti-women preachers. But you know what? You do it anyway. And after you tell God why you can't preach, he knew he would. He was. She was a lady. Uh, he, uh, it's amazing. God knows who you are before he calls. Why well, can I get a witness out here? Uh, uh, Paul was a murderer. He, he imprisoned people. In fact, I really, I made it show with you last week, or this week, whatever, I really believe the thorn in Paul's flesh was not his eyes or some physical problem. I believe the thorn in Paul's flesh was the fact that he had murdered people and he could not get over the memory of what he had done. And he asked the Lord to take this away from him. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. Get with the program. Why is that? 
because the power of the Holy Ghost draws them because they see it in somebody. Yes. Yes. I don't know if I promise it's 20 to 9. Stop this. Hallelujah, Jesus. Get with the program. No, don't scream. Don't strain your voice. And if you have road trader problems in your in your shoulders, you and you can't, you know, we're not trying to hurt you. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can I can I tell you how old you are? Hallelujah. You know how old that man is? He's 75. I thought it was 60. He's he looks so young. He can do an infra commercial on TV. Listen, God wants to take people like Brother Dick, like you, and turn you into firebrands for God. My last point. I close my Bible. When I was in Bible school, there was a teacher. You need to get out here and preach sometime. Donna Artwell. Yeah. You know, you know who? Yeah. When I was in Southwestern, she talked, but she was so quiet. Mm -hmm. She was from Delia, Texas. Yeah, she, was she was from the church of Brother Gresson, all Brother Carl Stewart. All those people came out of way before yeah. she was around. But her aunt remembers that. And Donna was real quiet. <coughs> well, I came back after I graduated, about a year or two, something happened to Sister Hartwell. I don't know what it was. <clears throat> but she, she still teaches there. She teaches prayer at the school. You could hear, I was on the campus visiting some people, some friends of mine. She started praying out loud. You could hear her all over the campus. I said, what happened to Sister Altman? She got on fire. She's still on fire. Yes, you can be on fire, Sister. Hallelujah. She got on fire. She's still on fire. She preaches the Acts 6 for a conference. She's a shouter. She's a praiser. She's a facilitator of the move of the Holy Ghost. You know what always drives me crazy, Brother Valentine? I'm already crazy, but you know what drives me crazy? Is when you go to services and there's a bunch of preachers and you're preaching and they sit on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Just basking in the presence of the Lord. But when they preach, they want you to get with them. That's right. This is not about me and you or you and me. This is not about what Sister Kimsey does, uh, the ministry, or, or Margie singing. It, this, this is about all of us. Yes. 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 Can anybody shout amen today? Yes. Yes. This is about everybody. Yes. Everybody shout everybody. So, yes. so let's come to the piano and put something uh, softly if you don't mind. We're going to pray tonight. I want everybody to stand tonight if you would have come in to stand in this altar tonight. Now the door is shut back there. <laughs> the door is shut. Well, the, the door is shut. All right. So the, 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 the moment the door is shut. Did, did y'all hear, hear me all come to the front? Hallelujah. Brother, we're going to pray for you. I'm so happy. And you're his, his, he's your, your son. Thank you for coming. I need mean that. What, what's your name? Randy. Brother, we're going to pray for you tonight, okay? Praise the Lord. Jesus, I'm going to touch you. Praise the Lord. Good God, that's going to touch your son. How many of tonight want God to begin to use your life? You say, well, they... I 
I want you to hear my heart now. Please do not misunderstand me. I learned a long time ago that if they don't want me in one church, I'll go somewhere else. I mean it. I preach on parking lots, under trees, in tents. I say, God, if you come in to do this, you can open up the door somewhere. There's going to be a drive within you to do ministry. Oh, Jesus. How many of you tonight want to become a vessel? Lift your hands right now. Begin to roll. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you for everyone that is here. Now lift up your voice right now. <laughs> Begin to tell the Lord you're available to him. Lord, dear God, we may be over 40, we may be over 50, we may be over 60, we may be over 70, we may be over 80, we may be under 40. But Lord, dear God, we offer ourselves to you to use us as you desire for the gifts of the Holy Ghost, Lord, dear God, to flow through us in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus. Lord, dear God, with this precious young lady, give her direction. Give her direction. Give her direction. Give her direction, Holy Ghost. You heard her. You're, you're going to guide her in the whole truth. God, you brought her here tonight for a divine purpose, Lord, in her life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, dear God, in the name of Jesus, use these lives. Use it, God. My sister here, she wants to be used to you, those children. Hallelujah. We praise your name, God, for Randy, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, to use Randy. Use Randy, God. Touch him, Lord. In the powerful, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Savior. We praise your name. I glorify your name. I magnify the name of Jesus. I lift up your name for Brother Manning over there, God, in this new God phase of his life and ministry. God, that new church plant over there. God, in Jesus' mighty name, let the Holy Ghost move. Give them the hunger for the Holy Ghost to move them in Jesus. And increase the anointing upon Brother Manny. Oh, God. somebody beside you that God will use them. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's lift your hands and praise Him right now, church. Worship Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise your name. Oh, Lord, we cut down the world seat to cut down. Hallelujah, Jesus. I praise your name. Kuramara Satala Kuramara Satana. Suramara Siti Katai. Jesus. Jesus. Give me your sister. I want your husband. This is your husband. Just stand right here. So I want you to hear this. I, I don't I, I don't really know y'all. I mean, I've seen you in church. But, but since last night, the Lord has reminded me about this. The hand of God is upon you. And He wants to use you. I'm not calling you to be a preacher. I'm not calling you to be a pastor. That, that's not what I'm doing here. The hand of the Lord is on your life. He wants you to become a facilitator of the presence of the Lord and the move of God. Do you go to, where do you go to church at? That's right, North Valley. Are you willing for God to use you? It's getting less and less of people that know how to move with the Holy Spirit. And you can't teach them. It only comes as a relationship with God. But there, there's the hand of the Lord is on your life. And He wants to use you. And then this this is not for your for your benefit so much. It's just God looks for vessels that He can use, and I felt that so strong just last night. And I was remiss to say today. I should have said that I didn't. But I want you to lift your hands right now, brother. I want you to lay your hands on your wife if you don't mind. Lord Jesus, <clears throat> I do not know. So would you lay your hands on her too? So the man. In the name of God, I do not know her life, anything about she and her husband, but you know all about them. And Jesus, Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. If you need prayer, come over here right and we're going to pray for you. The Lord is in this house right now. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Mama's happy. Mama's happy. Mama's happy. Mama's happy. Mama's happy. He's happy. Look at that smile on his face. Hallelujah. 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 He says, I'm glad. <laughs>